Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days for today's fur video. Uh, it's going to take us to around the 14th of January, so we're heading towards the middle part of the month with week 10 day uh, video update time frame. Uh, now we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles, which run to the next couple of weeks. We haven't got a CFS V2 for, for the next four weeks today. It's not updated since we did JMA Friday yesterday. Uh, so if you want to, want to know what it was showing yesterday, um, then have a look at JMA Friday, but there's no point in uh, showing it uh, again today. So um, a little bit shorter than normal, this video, I suppose. Uh, right, so the first video up today was the January month head forecast. That's grim update for anyone who wants cold and wintry weather this January. It looks like it'll be a very mild January uh, indeed, especially the first half of it. And uh, covering that period as well, of course, with for the next week is the weekend broadcast. Uh, so as so always on a Saturday we've released the weekend. Look at have a look at that. See what's going on there. So we're gonna start off with the central England temperature. Uh, so the CT is currently standing at 6.7. That's an anomaly of 3.3 degrees above average. It's provisional up to yesterday, the 3rd of January. That's probably going to stick around there for the next day or so. May tick down a slightly little bit, but I think it'll stay above 6 degrees. And then as we go through next week, that's going to rise. It will rise further uh, next week, especially around Tuesday through to Wednesday. Uh, that will get a real uh, boost. So, um... Sort of middle next week, we may see this going above 7.0. The all-time, uh, the all-time January CT record is 7.5, I think, from uh, January 1916. It's too early yet to say whether that's under threat or not, but certainly it's going to be an exceptionally mild uh, first half to January. We can say that very, very confidently, but the first half of January, January will be exceptionally mild. The only question is exactly how mild uh, will it be? These are the GFS and ECMWF 500 bill of our height anomaly flow charts for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have a look at uh, in a moment, is going to be on the bottom. This is from Penn State University, of course. These are the mean flow charts for the week to 10 day time frame. Takes us more or less into the middle of January. So uh, we see that uh, the ECM has this big area of below average heights in the middle of uh, the North Atlantic. What do I put that there for? So this is the ECM. And it has a big area of below average heights in the middle of the North Atlantic with that deep blue area. Above average heights are sitting away to our east. There's also a very warm ridge across the eastern side of America. Uh, it's going to keep them very mild as well. Uh, so for us, we jet stream and flow doing something a little... <laughs> <coughs> excuse me, a little bit like that. And uh, it means that we're just drawing up the air from the south or from the southwest. It looks very mild, uh, even in towards the middle part of the month with high pressure to the east and low pressure to the west. So the most unsettled conditions with that will be in the northwest. The driest conditions will be in the south and southeast. And all areas uh, are going to be mild if that comes off. The GFS makes less of that ridge to our east, actually. So the GFS is more unsettled, and um, it is also a little bit cooler. Uh, not much in it, really, but, I mean, we are bringing in more of a westerly as opposed to a long fetch south-southwesterly. So it's still relatively mild, but temperatures will be a few degrees closer to average. It will be rather more unsettled as well as that low pressure for jet stream is coming in off the Atlantic into... Uh, into sort of the northwest of Europe. But they're both signalling that the first half of January is going to be mild. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're in London today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off already a little bit above average with temperatures. We're only going to rise further. So by the early part of next week, Tuesday through to Wednesday, it can be exceptionally mild. Temperature going up to 10 Celsius at 850 HPA. 
are maintaining to drop back a little bit closer to average as you go through the second week of January up to the middle part of the month. However, even into the second half of January, which is this period just here, it is extended rain stuff, but even then, the temperatures, upper air temperatures are uh, above average. There's certainly no sign of anything cold coming up in the next couple of weeks. Precipitation wise, lots of dry weather over the next few days. Next week, gradually turns more unsettled. Could be quite a wet spell around Thursday. That's crept up on us, but it could turn quite wet uh, around Thursday, possibly through to Friday. I mean, just rather unsettled after that, running up into the middle part of the month and possibly even into the second half of January. That's the upper air temperatures for and precipitation for London, by the way. Not sure I mentioned that. Precipitation and temperature anomalies look like this. So as far as the temperature anomaly for the 4th to the 12th of January is concerned, it's above average quite substantially so now. So uh, we sort of 4 to 6 degrees, I think, on the temperature scale, above average from the 4th through the 12th of January. That may increase further as we look at it in the next day or so, that uh, temperature anomaly. Most parts of Europe look exceptionally mild as well. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to 12th of January. A little bit drier than average still. The southern and southeastern parts of the country a bit wetter than average up in the north. I would expect these to start trending a bit wetter even down in the south in the next few days. I thought I'd just show you this. This is the Northern Hemisphere view with the upper air temperatures. So this is starting today, uh, Saturday the 4th of January. Uh, it explains one of the things that's going on why there's such a westerly winter. So you can see a huge temperature contrast here uh, around Greenland and over towards the Canadian uh, Atlantic. So we have got exceptionally cold temperatures around Greenland and to the... Uh, to the west of Greenland and also going into uh, sort of uh, northeastern parts of Canada. We've got exceptionally cold temperatures there with those purple colours. That's all connected to the polar vortex, of course. Got the 10 Celsius isotherm uh, just here. Then we've got the 5 Celsius isotherm just there. We've got the 0 Celsius isotherm uh, just there. We've got the 10 Celsius isotherm just there, and the 15 Celsius iceberg is just there. That is a relatively small um, area to have such a large temperature contrast. And the upshot of that uh, huge temperature contrast that we've got going on here is going to be to fuel the jet stream to power up Wesley's. And, of course, the temperature contrast will produce uh, weather fronts, um, both warm and cold fronts and occlusions, and they'll develop into areas of low pressure as they steam across the Atlantic. And so this all connects into uh, an Atlantic-driven westerly flow, a strong jet stream uh, as well. Now, keep an eye on this area down here. Let's change the colour. Keep an eye on that area just there. So that's the southeastern coast of America uh, just there. So that's Florida. This is kind of like the Caribbean. Uh, we've also got like the Bahamas and Bermuda in that sort of area. So this is all like tropical uh, Atlantic type um, stuff down here. And that's why we've got such warm of rare temperatures down there. Now look what happens with that warm area over the next couple of days. So we go through to tomorrow. And you can see that those warm upper air temperatures are pushing further northwards uh, up this eastern side or off the eastern side of America. Go through to Monday and look where that area of very warm air has broken out of the Bahamas and Bermuda, where that is now. It's in the central part of the Atlantic. It's getting caught up in the jet stream of an area of low pressure and it's going in that direction. So as we go through to Tuesday, there we are. We are bringing an air mass in to the UK and Ireland on Tuesday that actually originated down here, somewhere in the tropical Atlantic, somewhere like uh, like the Bahamas. Um, and that very warm air is going to be with us on Tuesday. So Tuesday could be a remarkably mild day. Will be an overcast day. It's also going to be quite a windy day. You can see that from the tightly packed ice bar. So there will be strong winds around on Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, lots of cloud as well. There'll be rain in the north. I think we'll see temperatures lifting into the mid teen Celsius on Tuesday. So sort of 14, 15 degrees could well be relatively widespread. Whether we get the temperature any higher than that is going to depend on exact conditions that we have 
on Tuesday. This is the kind of situation that can produce bone effect, which is where it gets warmer on the eastern side of hills and mountains. So somewhere like eastern Scotland, potentially with this sort of uh, pattern, seas temperatures potentially going to like 17, maybe 18 degrees Celsius. But it is dependent on the exact conditions. There is going to be outbreaks of rain with this uh, air mass, and that particularly in the north, possibly affecting those areas where you would expect phone effect. Uh, and outbreaks of rain will have the result probably of cooling the uh, air temperature down by a few degrees. So it's touch and go exactly how mild it gets on Tuesday. But uh, certainly it does look as though Tuesday, the 7th of January, will find us uh, under an air mass that originates in the tropical Atlantic Ocean. It's going to be a case of uh, exact, exactly how the conditions play out as to how mild uh, it gets. So that's how the generic chart looks for Tuesday. And again, we're in those southwesterly winds. The air is rejected, as we've explained, from the tropical Atlantic. So it's going to be a very mild day, uh, whatever happens. We go through to Wednesday and we start to bring in some slightly cooler air from the northern Atlantic. Then we get an area of low pressure developing uh, around um, the southwest approaches on Thursday. That could turn many parts of the country quite wet on Thursday. That gets out of the way. We go under a little ridge of high pressure. Uh, then into next weekend, low pressure comes back, so it maintains the unsettled conditions through next weekend, still relatively mild. Moving up towards day 10, further wet and windy weather looking likely, particularly so in the northwest, tight back dice bar, so it could be gale force winds coming up uh, there. And then into the extended range, which takes into the second half of the month. Still, the westerlies keep coming. Eventually, the GFS 6 Scott run wants to build up some higher pressure to the south. That's a very mild ridge. Um, but could perhaps bring some frost and fog with it, especially if it starts to do something like this by the end of a GFS run, which gets us to Monday, the 20th of January. It's trying to sort of position itself over the top of the country. And so that would imply maybe the chance of an inversion with something a little bit colder, frosty and foggier happening down on the surface. Of course, that's a very long way out. It's over two weeks away. GM looks like that, so again, very mild and also windy from uh, Tuesday to Wednesday. Cools down a little bit from Wednesday to Thursday and potentially turns quite wet as low pressure sweeps in across the country. The ridge re-establishes a little bit through the end of next week, but it's not long before we're back into those westerlies. That's how we finish up with the GM. Just trying to raise the heights a little bit to the east. Low pressure is out to the west. There's nothing particularly cold doing there up to day 10, but it is trying to raise the heights a little bit to the east and also slightly over Scandinavia up to 1,025 millibars with the ridge over Scandinavia. And then the ECM also looking very mild on Tuesday. Quite windy and a bit of rain particularly so for northern parts of the country. How mild it gets on Tuesday is uh, over to question and remains to be seen. Through the middle part of next week, again, here comes that low pressure. Potentially brings us some quite wet weather around uh, Thursday into Friday. Now, there may be a little bit of snow, can you believe, on the northern side of that low uh, up across Scotland if it gets that far enough north. More about that in a moment. But um, we could go from exceptionally mild conditions on uh, Tuesday to the chance of a little bit of the hills snow only in the north and only over hills and mountains on Thursday. Weekend takes us back into those west southwest layers, so maintains mild and quite unsettled conditions and up to day 10 that's how we're looking again in another one of those long fetch southwest layers. Uh, upper air temperatures this time show that the air is originating kind of like from the Azores so somewhere a little bit more sensible uh, rather than sort of uh, Bermuda or the Bahamas. It's coming up from like the Azores, Canary Islands, that sort of area. It will still be very mild if it comes off like that. Quite windy, especially so in the north and in the west as well. And quite what the CT will be by the time we get to the middle of January. It will be interesting uh, to see just how mild that centering temperature might be by the middle of the month. 
Uh, now, this is from Tometro.com. So, this is the precipitation forecast based on that uh, ECM run. So, today, there'll be a shower rain up in the north. Otherwise, quite a bit of dry weather around today. Into tomorrow, the rain just peps up a little bit across northwestern parts of Scotland. Becomes a little bit heavier. Otherwise, dry weather mostly hanging on. Then, on Monday, a band of rain moves in from west. That's quite heavy, actually, across western parts of the country as it pushes across the country on Monday. But it does kind of fizzle out in the south and the southeast. Uh, Many to Tuesday, where well, here come those long fetch southwesterlies. They bring outbreaks of rain into the north. You'll notice eastern Scotland, though, doesn't look all that wet. So, somewhere like the Murray Firth, with this long fetch southwesterly and also a bit of phone effect thrown in. Um, there could be records going on Tuesday. I'll say no more than that. We'll just see what happens. Very wet on the western side of Scotland. That's classic sort of phone effect at work. Very wet on the western side of Scotland, western side of hills and mountains. Drier on the eastern side of those hills, mountains, and particularly for eastern parts of Scotland. Otherwise, damp, drizzly, cloudy and claggy conditions, really, most parts of the country on Tuesday. Into Wednesday, we sort of go into a clearer air mass. Notice showers turning wintry across western parts of Scotland, so temperatures do lower through the course of Wednesday. Wednesday could be one of those funny days where it starts off very mild, particularly in the south and east, and the temperature just falls away through the course of the day. Uh, and then this is where, where we could have on Thursday. So Thursday could turn quite wet. And as that rain pushes into the north, may turn to sleet or snow. So we go from that remarkably mild weather on Tuesday into something a little bit colder for Thursday. And for Scotland anyway, maybe the Pennines, possibly hills of Northern Ireland, there could be something uh, a little bit wintry going on there. Otherwise, quite a lot of heavy rain on Thursday for England and Wales in particular. And then that gets out of the way, and we build up a slight ridge of high pressure for Friday. That turns us a bit drier. Not long before the rain comes back, though, next weekend, more rain piling in from off the Atlantic. And we just keep this wet weather going, particularly the rain in the northwestern part of the country, less so in the south and the southeast. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 14th of January, day 10. So 18 members of the ECM ensembles, including the operational run, which is the run we've just been talking about, look like this. Quite unsettled at day 10 with low pressure just out to the west. High pressure is to the east. And we're bringing in west south west is so unsettled and mild. 16 members of the ECM ensembles, including the control room uh, has the high pressure just a little bit more influential. Look at this high pressure just closer to us from the east. The low pressure is pushed back more towards the middle part of the Atlantic. Could still be unsettled for western, northwest parts of the country, but certainly for eastern and southeastern areas, it would be dry at that. Temperatures very dependent with this on the exact origins of the air. If the air is coming from the south southwest, it's going to be mild or very mild. If the air is coming from the south southeast, uh, in that sort of uh, direction, then it could be a little bit cooler, maybe with some frost and fog. And it's uh, indeterminate, really, based on that um, anomaly chart. So there's no way of knowing from that exactly where the origins of the air are coming from. 12 members of the ECM on songs with high pressure sort of centred over Denmark. That would be bringing in more of a southeasterly, I think. So that one could be a little bit colder. Only 12 of those doing that, though. But it could be a little bit cold with some frost and fog. And then five have high pressure over Scandinavia. And maybe bringing in like a southeasterly too. So they could be rather colder with frost and fog. So the exact place, as I said yesterday's video, which was titled, Where is the high pressure going in the middle of January? The exact placement of that high pressure is critical as to what the temperatures are doing in the middle of the month. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we got. This gets us to the 19th of January. So by then, 20 members of the ECM ensembles have a large ridge sitting to our east. Now, that could well be bringing in a southeasterly of the continent. That could well be producing frost and fog. Uh, we have 18 members of the East Amazons with high pressure centered to our south. Low pressure is out to the northwest. Uh, that's more unsettled and potentially very mild as well. 
and then 13 members, including the control run, appear to take the high pressure up towards Scandinavia, take it a bit further north, so it's set up kind of over Norway and that sort of area, uh, and Sweden, and bring in a southeasterly to potentially slight easterly flow. There is a lot of low pressure out to west, which is still trying to maintain uh, mild conditions. The thing with that, of course, with the low pressure quite close to us, is that, again, you could get weather fronts becoming stuck as this low pressure tries to keep that west southwesterly going. Um, but they come up against this large area of high pressure up to the northeast. You might get weather fronts becoming stuck. That could produce a lot of rain. Uh, otherwise, if high pressure takes over to the northeast, then obviously it could turn colder with winds turning into the east. But um, this is all a very long way off. It's the 19th of January. And I still think with the polar vortex so strong and the zonality so rampant at the moment, any high pressure over Scandinavia is going to struggle, I would have thought. But we shall see where things go into the middle and second half of the month. But definitely in the next week to 10 days, it looks like it'll be pretty mild and it will be quite unsettled as well. Right, so that's it for your videos for today. Tomorrow, uh, we've got, uh, starting us off, Gowsworthy's Sunday Roundup. That's coming back. The Sunday Roundup will be first video up tomorrow. Actually, the first video up tomorrow will be the first update for spring. Nearly forgot about that. So, yes, we're beginning the spring updates. Um, and that'll be the first video up tomorrow, the first analogs update for spring. Then we'll have Gowsworthy's Sunday Roundup after that, probably sometime around lunchtime or early afternoon, and then in the evening we may do Ensembles Watch, which I know a few of you are waiting for, to go through the GFS Ensembles and see if there's anything uh, cold showing up in any of those GFS Ensemble members. We may well do that on Sunday evening. But uh, for today's videos, that's all for now anyway, and thanks for watching.